Welcome to another video and today I'm gonna talk about the unwritten rules of Valorant. There are some rules in Valorant where we don't talk about but we all know. For example that the first guy pushing A on Ascent should always close the door and that you never should upgrade the Karambit knife because the animation is not that good. It's been about a year ago since I made last episode and it's over 4 million views so you guys really like these type of fits. And I have good news because in that year a lot of new rules developed. Let's start with the first rule, actually the whole reason why I make this video. There are two player names that you just have to respect if they are in your game. The first First one, if you have a jet main called I miss her, ooh, it's GG for you my friends, unless he's on your team. So when you see that name, you're in for a tough game. Oh no, oh no, we're playing against I miss her, oh yeah, this is gonna be a hard one. The second name you shouldn't be respecting, but you should be careful of, and that's not smurf. If you see someone called not smurf, you know that's a smurf, and you know you're probably gonna get wrecked. Luckily, not smurf was in my team in this game. 25 kills, thank you so much for the carry not smurf. Let's move on to the next point and talk about glitches and bugs. As we all know, Valorant isn't perfect and each patch there are some new glitches that you can abuse during your games. But there are two unwritten rules about these glitches. The first one, you don't abuse glitches in your competitive games. You don't want to mess up someone's rank up game. That's not very nice of you my friend. In competitive games there's even a higher chance that you will get reported and get banned and that's not very good. But by now, after playing Valorant for almost 3 years, I know the community. Most of you guys, if you know a glitch, you want to use it at least once. I see you Borg trying to shoot through your deadlock ability with the Phantom. Dude, my util, I can like shoot through my util, so I did it. <laughs> so forget the rule that I just said, here's a new rule. In competitive, when you use a glitch, you're not gonna use it again in the same game. So only use your glitch once. It's better to not use your glitch because you don't want to get bent, of course. But if your fingers are tingling, you're only gonna do it once and just pray you don't get bent by Riot Games. Something that's in the roots of every Valorant player is that they have to be funky so now and then. What do I mean? Well, if you've been playing Valorant for the whole day, then your brain is probably gonna be mush and you're gonna do some strange things. Like this gecko is doing in this round. I said no. Me, man. No Give means me, man. no. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> We've all encountered teammates like this and you know what? I don't blame them. Valorant is making people crazy so now and then. Now a rule about the Valorant sprays. In the pre-round if you see your teammate using a spray and you notice that you have the same one, you always have to use it next to the one of your teammate. You guys are bonded now and belong together. You have the same mind and together you're gonna win that game. It will give like an invisible plus 10 teamwork boost and of course I'm not making that up. <laughs> I would never make things up, of course not. Next one, in Valorant when you die, then often you have to wait a while before you can play again. So what a lot of people are doing when they die is going AFK, maybe check their phone or something. But here's an unwritten Valorant rule, when you're playing with the Sage in your team, you don't go AFK. There's always a chance that Sage will revive you and then you need to be ready to play the round. And don't think, oh Sage doesn't have her ultimate ready so I'm going AFK. It's always a possibility that Sage gets like 2 kills and an orb and then suddenly she revives you. The amount of times that I revived an AFK player is insane. Brims, don't brims. Stone, what are you doing over there? Let's go back to the safe Yeah, I see. <laughs> Let's move on. An unwritten rule for when you are playing a new agent. As most of us know, when you're playing a new agent that has a Molotov, an unwritten rule is that you have to learn at least one or two post plan lineups. I've discussed this rule in the last episode, but I have an addition for this rule, my friends. When you're playing a new agent and you need to learn lineups, of course, you're not gonna do that before the game starts. You don't gonna hop into a custom game yourself and search for lineups, and you're also not gonna look on YouTube for lineups for every single map. No, no, no. That's that's not how it works. This is how it goes. When you want to play a new agent, you're gonna hop into a game, then see what map you are playing, and then you're gonna search on YouTube for lineups. So you will learn the lineups in between rounds. There's a reason that the timing in between rounds is so long, my friends, and that's to learn lineups. Next rule. This is a quick one. If you use your deadlock ultimate, it takes a while before the enemy dies, of course. Here's a rule that you just have to follow if you play deadlock. If you get the last enemy with your ultimate, you got to disrespect him. It doesn't matter if the enemy can't see it, but you just crouch a few times, show him your back, and that's how you win instead with that look one enemy remaining your strongest was not enough it was the deadlock diff over there. About diff, here are some rules about the Valorant chats. There's a term called diff and this means the difference in skill between two Valorant players playing the same agent. With a goal in the rule, if you want to compare someone, always compare yourself with an enemy. Don't compare a teammate with an enemy because that's just not very nice of you. And it's more fun if you play jet and play very bad for example, but win very hard because your team is carrying you and then say jet diff wins the game in chat or something. Another rule about the chat is that in a 1v1 you always say that the last guy is AFK. You know that he's not AFK, the enemy Enemies know that he's not AFK, but you just say it. Maybe you can throw an enemy of guard or something. Luckily, my teammate didn't fell for it in this round. 
Now let's talk about everybody's most hated gun, the Odin. I'm really sorry for all the Odin mains out there, but honestly, as most Valorant players know, an unwritten rule is that you just don't play the Odin. I mean, it's no fun when you use your sofa arrow and kill the enemies through the wall. One rule about the Odin though, if the enemy buys it first, then you also can abuse the Odin strats. Next rule, this one is about team deathmatch and deathmatch. First one, in team deathmatch, you're not gonna use your voice chat to talk about in-game strategies. I mean, it's team deathmatch, my friends, chill out. It's just a chill warm-up for everyone, you don't want to think too hard. If you're gonna use your voice chat, just do it in a chill manner. Get to learn some people, make some new friends, but don't sweat too hard in team deathmatch. The next thing is about all chat in deathmatch and team deathmatch. This one is simple, don't use it. Let's move on and talk about the premier tournaments. There's actually just one simple rule about this. If you won the premier tournament with the same team, of course everybody needs to equip the player card. By doing this, you will scare the enemies. They might think, oh no, they won the last tourney, we're gonna get wrecked this game. But in fact, your team is actually not that good as the enemies might think. Equipping the player card will just give an invisible boost. Now let's talk about the rule that I have discussed in a lot of tips and tricks videos, but I just had to also include it in this one because it's so essential. On Lotus over here, if the barriers are going down, don't push immediately. Almost every time the enemies will throw a lot of utility and that will do a lot of damage, my friends. Also, if you see your teammates are about to push, don't say nothing but warn them. Say that they don't need to push immediately. Just wait, wait a while because uh, a race grenade maybe. I see you teammates, you all wanted to push over there. Luckily I warned them, they went back a little bit and look at that, a race grenade at the start of the round. <laughs> Not that it mattered because we were 210 behind and lost the game very hard. While we're on Lotus, here's a quick one, I might be the only one. So I'm wondering if you guys are doing this, but on the attacker side, do you also always walk on this ledge over here? Apparently Chamber is doing this, so I'm not alone. You have to do something in the pre-round right and by the way setting up your cypher traps is overrated in the pre-round next rule when you're playing valorant of course you need to check the shop every single day you don't have to buy anything you probably don't have the money for that but still you have to check it especially the accessory store because you never know when the lowlander fish body comes in your store honestly when this little fish is coming in your store of course you need to buy it my friends that's also just an unwritten valorant rule now a rule about our favorite fireboy phoenix i think literally nobody ever said favorite fireboy but uh, now i've said it i I guess. Anyway, here's the rule. When you're low HP and you want to heal yourself, you're of course not gonna do that close to your teammates. What you gotta do is run far away, find a safe spot all by yourself, and then you're gonna set yourself on fire. Don't be a burden for your teammates, my friends. Now, a quick rule for those who have friends and sometimes are playing with those friends. When you see that the game is almost over, of course you're gonna wait for him. But things might get a bit complicated if the game isn't almost over. Take this game for example. It's 6-6. Do I have to wait for him or do I play in game? I'm not really sure. Well, here's a golden rule. If the game is half way there then you can do a quick deathmatch or swift play for example and when you see that your friend just started the game it can mean two things first he doesn't want to play with you so just play solo game or the second thing he didn't see that you were online so you can just start a quick game and when yours is over he has to wait like five minutes for you now let's move on i have two quick questions for you the first one if you're a supporter of this channel could you check if you're still subscribed sometimes youtube unsubscribes people and the second one if you think i missed anything let me know in the comments down below and maybe a part four is coming one day thank you for watching bye bye